Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion about probability in a little bit of a different direction now. So we're going to focus on what are called permutations. All right, so permutations are, are a way that we can determine how many different possible outcomes are there. Uh, and that really helps us deal with our sample space. So, so far we've done simple things in our sample space like flipping a coin, heads, and tails. Uh, but we also talked about, okay, we can also combine things. We can do like flipping a coin, rolling two dice, and drawing a, a card from a deck. And we want to know how many possible outcomes are there. And it explodes really quickly. And in, it would be really tedious if we had to sit down and write all those out. So let's start off with a rule that we can use to our advantage, and it's called the fundamental rule of counting. Okay, so the fundamental rule of counting is um, basically it comes down to this. So if we have an event one and it has n1 outcomes, Okay, so we're going to flip a coin. It has two outcomes. And we have an event two. Event two, and it has n two outcomes. We're going to flip a coin and roll a dice. Okay, we want to know how many outcomes are there going to be with our new outcome. Okay, so we can do this by simply doing n one times n two. Or with our dice example, this would be two flips of the coin multiplied by six possible outcomes of the roll of the dice. So that would give us 12 possible outcomes. And we could say that, hey, we could, we now have 12 um, for our sample space for flipping a coin and rolling a dice. And we can do this for much more complicated examples, but this helps us out. Now, let's say that uh, and let's let's do an example we could do that let's talk about oh uh, like Jersey uh, Jersey possibilities so like the Oregon Ducks you know they've got a ridiculous number of Jersey combinations because they have like four total uniforms they got four jerseys uh, they've got multiplied by five shoes and we'll do three helmets All right, so if you had four different jerseys, five different types of shoes, and three different helmets, how many total outcomes would it be? Well, we'd do four times five, which would give us 20, times three, which would give us 60 outfits. I think they actually did this with the Oregon Ducks before, and it was a ridiculous number of, of jersey and shoe and helmet and pant combinations that they could possibly have. But instead of like actually going through and labeling all of these, I was just able to quickly give us how many possible outfits we have. Okay, so now that, that we've got that, now we can talk about uh, something else. So we can talk about permutations, uh, or a, another, another type of permutation. Okay, so let's suppose, yeah, I've moved into a new office, I have five books, and I want to put them on my shelf. I want to know how many different ways can I organize these five books. And this is an interesting question. So we could go and sit down and try to figure out every possible outcome, but there's actually an easier way and we can use what are called factorials. So if we want to use a factorial, this is what it looks like. You take n factorial. So this would be the total number of objects that we have or outcomes or yeah, total number of objects that we have and we do a factorial. And that is equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 and we keep on going and going and so for until we get down to like 0 so we can say that doing 5 books 5 factorial would equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we stop at, at 1 
and that's how we get our 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so we could actually do that, so that would give us, I think this is 120. So we've got 20 right there, 60, 120, yep, so 5 factorial. So those 5 books could be in 120 different um, or, or orders. So that would be, so if I, like, what's the probability of choosing, you know, a, any specific order? It would be one out of 120. Now with our factorials, uh, just as a note, by definition, if you ever get to zero factorial, which we will in a little bit, but if you get to zero factorial, it doesn't equal zero. By definition, it equals one. So just remember that it's kind of like one little quirk. Okay, so we have all these permutations, um, but what if we have five books, but we can only put three of them in our shelf at a time? Like there's only th room for three. How many, how many orders then are there? Well, we can do that one too. So this is um, permutations taken K at a time. So it's going to be permutation, and then this is gonna be N K at a time and that's going to equal n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. All right, so let's do our book example here. So we've got something to work with. So we'd have five factorial, so that's five times four times three times two times one, divided by n minus k. So we've got five books. I said we could take three at a time. So five minus three is two. So we'd have two factorial, two times one. And we can just kick these off. And then we're left with a total of 60 outcomes. Okay, so if we have a lot of books but a limited amount of space, the number of outcomes that we actually can do is diminished. Um, and we can do this with lots of other examples as well. Okay, the last one that we want to talk about is we want to talk about, okay, are there distinguishable outcomes? Because sometimes um, our outcomes are indistinguishable from one another. And let, so let me do an example. Uh, let's do like a simple word, like uh, we can do Mississippi. It's, this is a dumb example, but we'll do it. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I. P, P, I. Okay, so this is one order of all those letters and uh, to form the word Mississippi. And we could rearrange them, but some of the, the permutations don't aren't distinguishable from the others. So for example, if I take these two S's and I just flip them, flip their order. To you and me, it looks like the exact same thing, but it actually is a different permutation because this specific S is in a different spot. And we want to know, okay, how many distinguishable permutations are there? All right, so the first thing that we do is we count how many letters we have. We'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we'd have eleven factorial on the top. You know, before we do this, let's get a generalized equation for this. So distinguishable permutations. Give me a second. Distinguish a bowl permutations and it's going to equal n factorial divided by n n1 factorial times n2 factorial times n3 factorial all the way to as many different outcomes as we have. All right, so let's take a look at this now. So we're back to our Mississippi example. We've got a total of 11 words, or 11 letters. Okay, let's start off with our first letter. How many Mississippis are there? There's one, so we're gonna do one factorial. Then how many I's are there? There are four I's, so we've got four factorial. How many S's are there? There are four S's. And how many P's are there? There are two P's. So now we could do we could expand all of this nice thing is is in most software excel we can do factorials and so we don't actually have to expand it all out but this is how we would determine how many distinguishable permutations are there so anyhow this is this is a way that we can help 
define our sample space without actually having to go out and enumerate every single possible option.